Hey there everyone, welcome back to the Fishing Duo channel. The weather's been pretty nasty lately, so I'm kind of stuck inside, but that's okay, because it's the perfect time to get some of my fishing gear ready for the next season. And that means it's time to spool up some spinning reels. Now you do a quick Google search or watch a few YouTube videos and it seems like there's a million different opinions on how to spool up a spinning reel right. But honestly, there's really only one method I have found that works to keep twist out of the line while I'm spooling it up. All right, the first step is to choose the right line. And I'm not just talking about brand because everyone has their preference. I'm talking about line weight. Every spinning reel has a specific range of line weights that it can handle based on the size of the reel. To find what line weights your reel is capable of holding, all you have to do is look at the side of the spool here and you'll see that it has the weight and corresponding line capacity stamped on the side. If it's not here on your reel, then just look at the box or the package that the reel came in. This next step is probably the single most important thing that we started doing that really makes spooling up a spinning reel so much easier. And that's pre-soaking your line in hot water. Not everybody does it, but I promise you, it makes a huge difference. And you can take a look for yourself. Notice how tight the coils are on this line before soaking. And now look at it after. Both mono and floral lines are kind of heat sensitive and absorb a little bit of water. So after the pre-soak, it effectively erases the memory in this line, softens it up and makes it spool on the reel so much smoother. And pre-soaking is easy. Just put the line spool in a shallow container and pour some warm water on it and let it sit for about 10 minutes. And in case you're wondering, in our experience, soaking the line in hot water does not really affect the integrity of the line itself, as long as you don't put it in boiling water. Some people actually prefer to do the soaking step last, and they actually remove the reel spool after they put line on it and put it in a warm glass of water. But there's a couple reasons why I don't like to do that. First, pre-soaking the line spool itself is actually what makes putting the line on the reel easier to begin with. And by soaking after, you kind of miss out on that benefit. Also, soaking at the end actually requires removing the reel spool and putting it in water. There's some sensitive parts in here, some little washers and metal components that I really don't care to expose to more moisture than necessary. Probably not going to hurt anything, but it's also not a great idea. After 10 minutes of soaking, the line should be plenty pliable and ready to go on the reel. But this is the step that causes the most confusion among anglers, and that's which way do you want the line to actually spool off of the spool and onto the reel? Should you lay it flat so it comes off clockwise, or should you flip it over so it comes off counterclockwise? Or you could even just hold it vertically and let it roll off the spool. Well, here's the thing. I've tested it in all directions, label up, label down, and vertical but there is always some amount of twist, no matter how I do it. The only way to get it on the reel with less twist is to pre-soak it. However, from all my research, the general consensus is that you should lay down the spool so that the line uncoils in a counterclockwise direction. And when you actually hold up your reel to the spool, it makes a little bit more sense why you'd want to do that. The reel itself rotates clockwise. And if the line comes off counterclockwise, then you can see the direction of rotation is actually the same. Intuitively, I guess it makes sense, but I just haven't seen the practical evidence that orienting your line spool one way or the other really matters that much. Just the same, I'm not really one to go against the grain, so for the sake of making sure I do everything I can possibly do to eliminate line twists when I'm spooling up a reel, I lay it so that the line unspools counterclockwise. And again, that's usually with the label up. Now that we got past that hurdle, it's actually time to put the line on the reel. And the whole process is much easier if you attach the reel to your rod. Then all you have to do is route the line down through the lower guide. And with the bail on your reel open, loop the line around the reel spool twice 
and finish it off with a double overhand knot. You can also use an improved clinch knot or an arbor knot too, but the strength of the knot isn't all that important, so just pick a knot you're comfortable tying. Next, you're going to want to cinch down the knot and clip off the tag end as close to the knot as you can. And at this point, if you want to add a piece of tape, you can. Some people feel it helps keep the line from spinning as you're trying to spool up the reel. But the only time I really think it's necessary is if you're putting braid on your reel without a mono backing. Otherwise, you're ready to close the bale and start winding on the line. And if you suddenly realize that you accidentally tied the line on the reel without opening the bale, it's no big deal. All you have to do is unscrew the reel spool, pull it off, open the bale, and then reinstall the spool. Now you can start winding the line on. The last step is to actually start spooling the line onto the reel. And I find the key to this is to make sure there's enough pressure on the line while you're reeling so that the line lays flat on the reel spool. You can either use your fingers or you can use a rag, which I find works best because you can squeeze this line without adding a lot of friction. And you also don't burn your hand. So you just start spooling until you get the reel filled to where you need it. And make sure you tighten down your drag. You really don't want any drag slipping while you're spooling on the line. Because if your drag slips while you're reeling, that's a guaranteed way to introduce line twist. It's at this point in the process of putting line on the reel that you could actually use a line conditioner. A really popular one is called Reel Magic. All you have to do is spray it on the reel spool every once in a while as you're winding on line. And it acts to soften up and make line even more pliable. It reduces the memory by quite a bit. The only thing is pre-soaking your line in water actually does the same thing. So I really haven't found the need to use line conditioners. But if you're working with line that you think just still has too much memory, give it a try. It really might help you out. And be sure to pay close attention to your reel as you fill it and slow down as it starts to get full because spinning reels are not designed to be completely full. If you overfill a spinning reel, your line will just billow off every time you open the bale or cast or let tension off the line, which can be super frustrating. But underspooling a reel can be just as bad. You see the slant here on the edge of the spool? That's there for a reason. It really helps to make casting much smoother. And on a properly filled spool, the line glides over that edge with very little contact. Whereas on a line that's underfilled, that line, as it comes off the reel, beats against that reel edge and adds friction, which results in much shorter casts. Also, your retrieval speed is way slower with an underfilled spool because you're wrapping less line around the spool each time you turn that crank. On a properly filled spool, your line should stop short of the spool edge by about one eighth of an inch. Now there's a lot to like about monofilament line, but for the last few years, I've actually been running almost exclusively braided line on all my spinning setups especially when I'm finesse fishing, like with a drop shot or something, and I need that extra sensitivity. You might not be a fan of braid, but there's no doubt that braid is the most sensitive line you can put on your reel. Another reason why I made the switch to braid was because it really doesn't have any memory, like mono or floral, which makes it so much more manageable when you're fishing. And other than the rare wind knot, it doesn't seem like I really have to deal with any line twist or tangles while I'm fishing. One of the biggest drawbacks of using braid though is that it's just not as invisible in the water as mono or fluoro. And if you look at this 10 pound braid next to 8 pound mono, you can see it really stands out. But I almost always use some sort of leader when I'm fishing with braid, whether it's mono or fluoro, and I very rarely tie a lure directly to the braid. So it's really not a huge issue for me for my fishing situations. Spooling up with braid is a little bit different than spooling up with mono on a spinning reel. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either put the braid straight on the reel or you can use a mono backing. Now I've always opted to put on a mono backing and that's because braid's kind of expensive. And by putting on a mono backing, you can use a lot less braid on your reel. Another reason why I like to put on a mono backing is because braid's kind of slick and if you put it straight on the reel, it can sometimes slip around and you'll have to tape it down before you start winding it on. But if you want to spool up the way I do, all you have to do is start with spooling up some mono just like I showed you earlier. 
Once you get enough mono on that the reel is about one third to half full, you can cut the mono off the main spool and now tie the braided line to your mono attached to the reel using something like a double uni knot, which works great for me, but you can use another line to line knot if you want. With the braid attached to the mono, you're ready to start winding all the line on the reel, but you still want to remember to not overfill the spool. Although, because braid is so much more manageable and pretty much has no memory, you can get away with filling it up a little bit more than you would with mono. Something between an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch from the edge of the reel is just fine. The last thing you need to do is attach a leader material to the braid. You can use monofilament or fluorocarbon. It really depends on the application you're using it for. But you do want to remember to not make the leader so long that the knot joining the two lines is in the reel when you're about to cast. Otherwise, when you cast, that knot can get tangled up and make a big mess. Typically, a leader of five to seven feet is just about right, and that'll put that knot somewhere between this first guide and the reel. Line twist is a major headache for anglers, and spooling up right is a great way to prevent most of the problem. But there's still a couple things that cause major line twist while you're fishing, and it comes down to bad fishing technique. And there's two that come to mind in particular, and we'll go over those now. The absolute worst thing you could do to add a ton of line twist into your spinning reels is to reel while your drag is actively slipping, which usually happens when you're fighting a fish. And if you reel while a fish is pulling drag, you're pretty much adding five to seven twists in the line for every turn of the handle. So to fix that, adjust your drag a little bit. And when a fish is pulling drag and running, let it run until it stops and then start reeling it. And you'll probably be okay. The last thing I'm going to talk about doesn't necessarily add line twist to your spinning reel, but it does open the door for introducing some major slop in your line, which can cause you problems later on. Plus, this is something I see anglers doing all the time. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't guilty of it too from time to time. And that is not manually closing your bail after you cast. Just reeling to snap that bail shut is a really easy habit to get into, but don't do that. Every time you cast, work on reaching up with your other hand to close that bail manually. That also gives you the chance to pull on the line and get it realigned on the roller, and also helps keep the line tight to the reel spool. It's a good thing to practice and will save you a major headache later. Well, I think that wraps it up for this video, but thank you so much for watching. We really hope this kind of stuff helps you out. And if you have some tips of your own on how to spool up a spinning reel, please drop a comment below because we'd love to hear it. And if you think this video earned it, please consider subscribing because it's all of you that make doing this worthwhile in the first place. You can also check us out at fishingduo.com where we've got a ton more helpful fishing content. So until next time, take care and we'll see you on the water.